Well, let's get into the nuclear debate with an absolute leading world expert. He's here in the studio, former CEO of Ansto, Dr. A.D. Patterson. Great to have you here, A.D. You did a cracker of an interview on the ABC during the week. You ran Lucas Heights for a while. You're a world-renowned nuclear expert. The ABC, it was a fantastic interview because you <laughs> completely blew them out of the water. They didn't know where to look or what to do and were desperate to get you off. And it's quite difficult to now find that particular interview on the ABC's site. What a surprise. Now, let's get stuck into it. Why should Australia, in your opinion, be a nuclear power? I think we can't afford not to be a nuclear power. I think the big challenge we're now facing, which uh, is depressing to me, is that we are in a massive thought bubble about how we can get electrons from solar panels and wind turbines both of which I worked on in the 1990s and the early 2000s and came to the conclusion that they would not work. Everybody thinks that solar panels are new. The first solar panel revolution uh, happened 20 years ago and it failed. But my fear for the Sydney Basin is what I call the big hailstorm. What we don't know is that is already we're facing solar panel risk. If we get a mega hailstorm across the Sydney Basin, we will lose a power, um, uh, literally a power plant. We used to build big plants out in the bush. Our power plant now given to us by AEMO is the rooftops of Sydney. When the big hailstorm comes, and, and a big hailstorm will come in the next 20 years, we will lose 500 megawatts of power in the Sydney Basin, which is keeping the lights on, and that is AEMO's plan, because these hail will smash the panels on our roofs and the lights will go out. That's the plan. Build bigger solar panels out in the bush where they also have hailstorms. I don't think anybody's done the risk management or the control or the thought about what this will mean for us. The same for wind turbines. Wind turbines last for about 20 years. The big wind turbines are now seven mega megawatts. That is a massive machine. In the Sydney Basin, they work 37% of the time. Summarising, two days out of every five, everybody says to me, Eddie, but the wind's always blowing somewhere. No, it's not. It's highly correlated across Eastern Australia. Now, if somebody said to you, I'm going to give you a car, it's really wonderful, it's completely green, but you can only use it two days out of five, what would you say? Probably not. <laughs> I'm going to give you a really wonderful solar car um, uh, but, you know, you work in an emergency room at a hospital or you run the sewage plants or you have to get to the airport to bring the, airpo um, um, the aircraft after dark, I'm afraid you can't use this car if it's not charged up after dark. You... We're building a world where solar panels, wind turbines, which are flaky resources, Germany has already failed and is deindustrializing. I think it's possible that BMW will move out of Germany in the next five years. Because Munich now is a little bubble of failed uh, plans, which is the AEMO plan. Mm. My own view is that AEMO should be completely restructured. It should be brought back into the real world, not Animal Farm. You know, Animal <laughs> Farm, where, I, frankly, I think Animal Farm is, is a little bit kind to the, AE, the AEMO uh, paradigm at the moment. Really what I'm saying with humour is that I'm deeply worried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the Australia that we love is on the edge of a cliff. I think that we have got a thought bubble in an animal farm in Canberra and AEMO, and I think we're in big trouble. And we're not looking at the overseas experience. We're not looking at Germany, for example, and we keep hearing this mantra from uh, the renewables, uh, uh, not just the renewable sector, but also uh, most of our politicians, that nuclear is the most expensive form of energy. And then we had that CSIRO GenCost report come out saying the same thing. Nuclear is going to be far more expensive than renew uh, new renewables. What's your response to that? The GenCost report looks at one reactor, which is being built in Finland. It's a gigawatt scale. That's a thousand megawatts. I'm not proposing that we build, and I haven't proposed that we build gigawatt scale reactors in Australia for the last two years, but people are not listening. I think we should be building uh, reactors at the scale of a large wind turbine. 
there are reactors being built in the world today that are five megawatt reactors. I've just told you that a big wind turbine is seven megawatts. Now, what are you going to choose, a five megawatt reactor or a seven megawatt wind turbine? One that's going to be on all the time that connect into the grid that you've already got. It's very close to an existing power, uh, power source. It's got a safety case, which is the container on the pad. You don't need a 10 kilometer safety zone. These are already licensed. I mean, in Idaho, they, they're building one of these things. Bill, Bill Gates is, is uh, uh, building a, a, a molten salt reactor in Wyoming. These are actual real projects that, got, that, that are being built now. The great thing about them is that we already have a supply chain in Australia because these reactors are smaller than the Opal reactor, which has a 20 megawatt core. This is, we've already approved that in Australia. So I think we've got to move away from the, you know, gigawatts and, and fear and move to the, to the megawatts. And, 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 and you've called the Gen Cost report a, a con, Gen Con. I call it call Gen it. Con report. It's worse than that. It's, it's, it's actually a form of fascism. Uh, it is put together by an economist with a master's degree and a person who is a proponent of wave power. Oh. It's, it's not the CSIRO report. Uh, it's 10 spreadsheets, uh, which are, are sold to um, the Australian public as if uh, it's mandated by somebody who can spell nuclear. <laughs> it has not a single ounce of credibility. I believe that we could have a new report. In fact, I was talking to one of my colleagues that we're going to start a little startup to do this, to take out the Gen Con narrative and to create reports for a municipality level for each municipality of what nuclear could do with you, for you with these smaller plants that I'm talking about. Some of these plants could literally be in our backyard within five to seven years. That's the build time. It's about the same duration as a wind turbine type project, a big wind turbine project takes. We just have to change the, the paradigm. We lift the ban. Uh, we take the power away from the central government and we give it back to state governments. James? AD, just quickly, the UAE, they've got lots of sun, as we do, but they've introduced nuclear. What's happened to the price of electricity since they've gone nuclear? Uh, well, first of all, it's become much better quality, so you can keep your industry going. And the other great thing about it is, is that they've really solved the problem of all the, the, the gas and other plants that we that were using. Now, they built big ones because they had a big problem. But the people in, in, in other communities are building small ones. So the UAE actually built big plants, first one seven years, second one five years. Mm. It's just wrong to suggest that it you know, takes too long, costs too much. What costs too much is not being strategic. Nuclear is complicated, but hey, we can deal with complexity. We're Australia. And you reckon the costs will come down with nuclear energy in this country? I'm absolutely certain because I'm an expert on the grid, not just nuclear. The cost at the fence, you pay more for the cost at the fence of the plant, but the cost in the home goes down to one third. We know this from Finland. Their big expensive late nuclear plant, when they switched it on, the price of electricity to Finnish uh, uh, consumers went to 30%. Fantastic. It's been done. <laughs> Brilliant. AD Patterson, thanks so much for talking to us. A fount of knowledge there on nuclear energy. And uh, we'll, there's so much more we could talk about there. Thanks so much for coming on Outsiders today.